For the last time this season, we get a Lone Star showdown here at Minute Maid Park. The Astros trying to avoid a four-game sweep by the Texas Rangers on getaway day. It's Brett Oberholzer, it's you, Darvish, it's Astros baseball, and it starts right now. Live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Comcast Sportsnet brings you Houston Astros baseball. Today it's the finale of this homestand. The Astros take on the Texas Rangers. Good afternoon, Bill Brown and Alan Ashby. It's been all Texas Rangers in this series. They're going for a sweep of the four-game set. They've been running off the wins. They're in first place in the AL West by one game over Oakland, Ash. And they run out there today with their ace, U Darvish, and that never makes things easy. Witness game two of the season this year for the Astros against the Rangers. U Darvish went uh, perfect for eight and two-thirds. So, yeah, really tough customer. Today, the Astros will send left-hander Brett Oberholzer, a rookie with two straight shutout starts of seven innings each. And he's done it against a couple of very good offensive clubs, Baltimore and then Boston. You look at the numbers, if you're inclined to like a zero ERA, then you just might like Brett Oberholzer at this point. He has been uh, just perfect in terms of being a starter. As a reliever, he had his struggles. But here you see him against the Baltimore Orioles. And he will work that inside corner as well. Nice little change up for a strikeout. He can throw the fastball over bats. Brett Oberholzer to this point through two games, very promising as you head toward looking for a, a starting rotation of the future. You talked about you, Darvish, and the gem he pitched here in game two of the season. Perfect for eight and two thirds. And Darvish is really atop the leaderboard in terms of strikeouts in Major League Baseball. You, Darvish, also three and one lifetime against the Astros. So he's had his way against Houston. Uh, over his last four games, he has been brilliant. Three and one, 137 ERA in that span, and a 191 batting average against. If you go on the season, right hand batters are hitting 149 against Darvish. Coming up, Bo Porter talks about his club. The Astros trying to capture this final game of the homestand before going on a three-city road trip. He joins Julia Morales right after this.
Well, the Rangers' last day in Houston for the season, and the Astros are trying to grab a win before Texas leaves town. The Astros coming off of a night off after a day game yesterday. More time for them to get over the tough loss that happened yesterday. Not any tougher for anyone than Dallas Keuchel, who pitched a very solid game against the Rangers and came within one out of pitching the club's first complete game of the season. And he showed his disappointment after the game, saying we just have to become better baseball players. We have to get better. We have to become more knowledgeable. He said, talent-wise, we're there. We know we can win games. And the Astros have dropped five straight. They're trying to avoid this sweep from the Texas Rangers. And Bo Porter, the skipper, has expressed his frustrations as well. But he did say this club shows up every day ready to play. The effort is there. I mean, that's, you know, I think, you know, you guys have asked me that question a 100 times, and I'll give you the same answer a 100 times because the effort is something that is not even is not ever going to be compromised. You know, I think that there's, you know, segments of the game in which we just need to improve. And, you know, we've we've been in ball games, we've had position to win ball games, but this is major league baseball. You know, nobody is walking away feeling like it's a moral victory. I don't believe in moral victories, you know, in the first place. I mean, this is a performance based league where you have to close games out and you have to win ball games. That's at the end of the day, that's what it's about another tough task for the Astros today facing you Darvish who's been pitching very well as late the guys in the booth talked about that and like I mentioned earlier trying to snap that five game losing streak but last time the Astros won Brett Oberholzer was on the mound and he will be on the mound today coming up we'll have first pitch and line was for you keep from here at Minute Maid Park don't go anywhere we'll be right back Star Fairs online only at Southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Go big at a participating Jack in the Box with Jack's really big chicken sandwich combos for only $3.99 plus tax. This game is starting right now. Leone Smartine getting in the batter's box. Starting about a minute early by the clocks in the stadium. He's on a five game hitting streak. And that pitch goes behind him as he squares around as if to bunt. That is ball one for Brad Oberholzer. Yeah, just a bit inside, huh? A little bit. Oberholzer has walked two in 21 in one third innings. Home plate umpire Ron Culpa walking around. What a way to start the game. We got the home plate umpire shouting it out with guys in dugouts. Don't know that a warning was issued there. I hope not. We'll see one. Martin looks at that one. It's a ball. And it's two balls, no strikes. 
Martin drove in a run with the ninth inning single last night. Ron Culpa, Tom Halley, and Phil Cuzzy, and Chris Guccione are the umpires on this crew. Beats that one off his leg, and it's a two ball, one strike count. Uh, Martin has been a successful leadoff man lately. Three for 13 in this series, 277 for the season with six homers, 27 runs batted in. This is his 14th straight start in the leadoff spot. And the Rangers have gone 12 and 1 in the first 13. Leads the majors with 10 bunt hits. That's ball three, and it's three and one to the Cuban born Leonis Martin. I'm wondering if there's some residual effect from late yesterday in the ball game. Martin tried to bunt his way aboard in the ninth inning. I believe it was when the, the Rangers had taken a sizable command at that point. And I'm just wondering if, if there are some angered Astros pitchers that might have led to that fastball being behind the hitter. On Washington looking on that was definitely the case yesterday when Texas had built up that five nothing lead and he tried to put one down. That's a foul ball. Well, the way the home plate umpire Ron Culpa took a little walk. Maybe he was thinking along those lines as well. Well, clearly there was some uh, hollering coming out from the Rangers dugout. And I assume it was Ron Washington, but yeah, I wonder how many people might have taken note of that bunt attempt last night. Oh, it bounces up there for ball four. Well, Martin. That was a leadoff walk. The ball got away. Now he'll stay at first base after Carlos Corporan retrieves it. Here's the lineup with Martin followed by Elvis Andrews, Ian Kinsler, Adrian Beltre, AJ Brzezinski, Alex Rios, Jeff Baker, Craig Gentry, and Jerks in profile. Brett Overholzer on the hill for the Astros today. ERA at 253. That's counting the games that he's pitched in relief. Where he's had an ERA over the seven mark. You can see he strikes out just over five per nine innings. That whip, very, very good. The two starts, 14 shutout innings. Throw goes over to first. Martin has 27 steals in 33 tries. Rangers, as a team, have stolen 87 bases. That's third in the American League. Good numbers for the Cuban born outfielder. 82% of the time, he has been successful when he's tried to steal. He's going. Here's a throw from Corcoran and the tag by Elmore, and that gets him. Jake Elmore with the tag, and Corcoran throws out Martin, erasing him from two to four. Astros catching of late, making some great throws with runners going. Jason Castro, and now Carlos Corcoran today. Pitch a little on the outside. That means you have to reach on the backhand and then make that exchange, and it was perfectly done by Corcoran. No more with the tag, and now Carlos is thrown at eight of 26 attempted base stealers. Pitch with ball one to Andrews. Andrews takes it. It's a one ball, one strike count. Andrews starting the day at 257, hit his first home run since September 4th in this series. September 4th, 2012. It had been some 557 at bats between long balls. Andrews connecting Saturday night. And the Texas 5 4 win. Andrews fouls that one away. Two balls, two strikes. The Rangers are in the middle of the pack and run scored. Here's the Astros defensively. Carlos Corporan behind the dish. Around the infield, Brett Wallace. Jake Elmore gets the start at second base with Jonathan VR back in the folded short. Matt Dominguez at third in the outfield. Brandon Barnes flanked by Mark Krause in right and Robbie Grossman in left. Two balls, two strikes. Andrews has hit 319 his last 23 games. And that one is a strikeout pitch. Overholzer breaks it down under his hands for out number two. Big breaking, breaking ball sweeping down and in. Gets the strikeout. So far through a couple of hitters, you'd have to say Overholzer is not as sharp as we've seen, but nobody on base and two outs for the lefty. Ian Kinsler comes up next. Kinsler's been tailing off lately. He's hit 202 in his last 25 games. His average has dropped from 290 
to the current 266. He has 10 homers. He's driven in 48. He rips one up the left field line into the corner. That lands softly and scoots on over deep into the corner. And Robbie Grossman gets it back in toward third on a two out double by Kinsler. 21st double for Ian this year. Ian Kinsler, a lot of the time, will take pitches early in the count, but right here with two outs, nobody on base, I think he just flat guessed fastball, got it, and threw a good portion of the heart of the plate and hangs out the line shot. The Rangers are fourth in total bases in the American League. Kinsler in scoring position for their cleanup man, Adrian Beltre. 21 doubles for Kinsler. Beltre's driven in 71. He's second in the league in total bases and in hits. Beltre takes that one. That is strike one to Adrian with a 320 average, fourth best in the American League. He's gone deep 25 times. And with the OPS of 900, that ranks him sixth in the American League for Beltre. Beltre has four hits and 11 at bats in this series. Makes him skip rope. It's one and one. Beltre has been on a rampage since the 4th of July, hitting 376 with 11 homers, 29 runs batted in. And there he ranks one behind Miguel Cabrera for the hit lead in the American League. Cabrera's gone deep twice against Mariano Rivera in that Yankee series. That's very impressive. Not a good swing by Beltre. That makes it a one ball two strike count after the earlier pitch that made him skip rope. He didn't seem to have his heart in that swing. But Beltre has produced outstanding results against Astros pitching 347 four homers nine runs batted in. Rangers have really had the Astros number winning 10 and losing two against Houston and going back further they've won 24 of their last 29. In tight to him and it's two and two. Well, this is something that Overholzer is persisting at, and to his credit, working inside on right handed hitters. Sometimes a young left hander will come to the big leagues and fail to do that. Beltre with 57 two strike hits, still a threat. He hits that one foul and out of play, first base side. Yeah, there's been a lot to like about Overholzer since coming into the Astros rotation. With two starts of seven innings and no runs allowed. Didn't walk anybody in his seven innings of three hit shutout ball at Baltimore, winning that one 11 0. Last time out, beating John Lackey in Boston 2 0 with seven innings of four hit shutout ball. Two walks in that one. And foul ball. Well, a good try by Carlos Corporan. He caught it on the short hop and tried to run out of there and do a deep job on strike three. I'm going to guess most four man umpiring crews may not buy into that move by Carlos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's leave the field. I like that. It's worth a shot. Fred Oberholzer has shown as a youngster that he's got a, a well developed change up, slider and curveball to go with it. That's hit well to left center field headed out for the bullpen fence and that'll drive in the first run of the game one to nothing Rangers RBI double for Beltre another two strike delivery for the cleanup man for RBI number 72 that's his 25th double. Well it's a tough part of the order the Texas Rangers present Adrian Beltre right now the key guy in this batting order. And even with the breaking ball, once you get to that deep part of the count, pretty good breaking ball down, and yet good hitter Beltre wins out. Beltre was hitting 431 for his previous 13 games. He remains hot and provides the first run today, and he's in scoring position now for A.J. Pierzynski. Pierzynski loops one. And that finds a landing zone in right center field to make it two to nothing Rangers. 47th run batted in for Pierzynski. Three consecutive two out hits. Got the Rangers to an early lead. 
We talked about Pierzynski and his success against left hand pitching this year and he just continues that doesn't hit it hard just hits it where they ain't. Nothing you can do about a base hit like this. Finally Oberholzer has yielded some runs as a starting pitcher. Alex Rios brings an 11 game hitting streak into this one. 281 is his average. He's gone four for seven in this series, his first two games as a Ranger. 12 homers, 57 runs batted in after arriving in the trade from the Chicago White Sox. Rios takes a look at it, and it is ball one to him. Now Rios replacing Nelson Cruz as the Rangers' everyday right fielder after Cruz began serving his 50 game suspension. Takes a look at that, and it's a strike to even the count at one and one. It's going to be interesting to see how Rios fares in this Texas lineup. He's going to a terrific hitter's park in Arlington and joining a good lineup and picking up a lot of games in the standings, leaving the last place White Sox and moving to the first place Rangers. That sometimes can energize a player. One and two. I would think it'd be an ideal fit for Alex Rios and for the Texas Rangers. This guy's shown in the past he's capable of hitting 300, hitting 25 plus bombs, and he can steal the bags. Good defensive outfielder. Yeah, he gives the Rangers an upgrade defensively over Cruz. That's strike three. And the Rangers strike for two on three hits. They leave a man in the first. They give you Darvish a two to nothing working room. Losing streak with this lineup. Robbie Grossman left field. Mark Krause right field. Brett Wallace first base. Chris Carter DH. Matt Dominguez third. Carlos Corporate catcher. Brandon Barnes center field. Jake Elmore second base. Jonathan VR shortstop. Right hander you Darvish on the hill. One of the tough ones in all of Major League Baseball. Get a load of that batting average by the right hand hitters against him. 149. The lefty's not having a great time of it, but yeah, that's phenomenal at this stage of things. 149. 11 and 5 on the year. Excellent ERA at 272. When this guy's healthy and feeling it, you are in for a tough day. Defensively for the Texas Rangers, behind the dish, A.J. Pierzynski. Around the infield, Jeff Baker, Jerickson Profar, Elvis Andrews, and the RBI machine, Adrian Beltre at third base and a gold glove maker. In the outfield, Leonis Martin in center, flanked by Alex Rios in right, and Craig Gentry in left. Bobby Grossman leads it off for Houston. And the left fielder has hit in 11 of his 13 games since rejoining the Astros from Triple A Oklahoma City July 27th. He's hit 367 during those last 13. But he's had a tough time in this series. Bobby takes strike one. He is one for 13 in the Rangers series. 
batting average 250 for the year three homers he's driven in 12 has an on base average of 344. Beltre even with the edge of the grass and off the line at third. Darvish has so many different pitches it becomes really a, a choice for him on each batter. He has so many different things he can throw up there ash different angles does it from the stretch. That's what he has settled in on. But again the way he dominates right hand hitters in particular. He just makes it so tough and, and you would think at this stage every team would try to load as many left hand batters in there as possible and yet they will have their struggles. He's three and one lifetime against the Astros with a 3.03 ERA. And that gets a strikeout on Grossman looking on the breaking pitch for out number one. Robbie apparently thought this pitch was low, but that's a good looking breaking ball. Easily at the knees, and once again, Robbie Grossman gets caught peeking on the third strike. Mark Kraus is in that lineup. Uh, you talked about the left handed bats doing much better against Darvish. That's one reason he's in there batting second. He works the count. Darvish has walked 50 in 146 innings. Krause at 174, three homers, 10 runs batted in, trying to get something started here. He has gone four for 10 with a homer against Texas pitching this year. Darvish throws in at strike one. See, there's your, your leadoff fastball, but what he does is he puts a little cut on it at the last instant. Now, he's not throwing real hard here yet this afternoon, but he just darts the ball back and forth and spots it in great locations. Inside to Kraus. Very willing to work the inside edge. Darvish will turn 27 in four days. Last year he went 16 and 9 as a Ranger with a 3.90 ERA. Fastball zips by Kraus to make it 1 and 2. Kraus is tops on the Astros club in pitches per plate appearance 4.36. Fred Wallace on deck. Darvish spent some time on the disabled list with the right trapezius strain in July. Since he came off the DL, he's made four starts. He's gone three and one with a 1.37 ERA. This is his fourth start of the year against the Astros. The last time he faced them in Texas, July 6th. He lost the game nine to five, giving up five runs in six innings. He gets a swing and a miss from Kraus. And Krasinski throws to Baker at first to complete the strikeout. Uh, just another breaking ball. And I, you get the sense that Darvish knows early on that he doesn't have the great fastball at this point. But he bends that breaking ball in the dirt, gets the swing on it, and back to back strikeouts to start things. And with two strikes, he's gone more and more to the breaking ball this year, 57.3% of the time. Looking at some numbers on you, Darvish, the fastball is actually up a bit on the average over last year. A bit surprising there. But he can turn in, in, in a number of directions when he's scuffling with one pitch. Strike to Brett Wallace. He really can. He has many options. Wallace has hit in eight of his last 11 games, 219 for the season. Nine homers, 24 runs batted in for Wallace. 0 for 9 in this series. Darvish lets up on it and gets in front. No balls, two strikes. Darvish is coming off a win, eight to three at Anaheim Tuesday. He gave up three runs in seven innings. Runs that one away to create a one and two count for Wallace with Chris Carter on deck. On the 0-2, Darvish goes to a bit of a slide step to hurry things toward the plate and brings the fastball at 95. Yeah, he does have multiple looks, doesn't he? Different pitches, different uh, type of delivery angles. Two balls, two strikes. I would say that curveball in the dirt with two strikes is intentional. And he got the little swing from Kraus, wanted another here from Wallace. 
after Darvish pitched in Japan. The Rangers signed him as a free agent, six year deal. $60 million, and they also paid a posting fee of $51.7 million as he replaced lefty CJ Wilson in their rotation. Full count now to Wallace. A lot of money, but this guy is proving to be nothing but a winner. That's strike three. Darvish strikes out the side, and the Rangers lead it two to nothing after one. Now for our Geico quote, it comes from the Rangers skipper, Ron Washington, the most successful manager in their team's history. That guy Saturday, Peacock and Keiko, they're going to pay dividends down the road. They've got to straighten out a few things, and they will before long. And Dave Maggot and the hitting coach uh, also suitably impressed, as he said, around the batting cage by those two starters. One thing everybody's going to be impressed about is the way they both work the inside edge. Mm -hmm. A lot of pitchers will stay away, 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 but Tell you what, the Astros' young pitching is doing a great job, and, and a lot of a, a lot of the credit goes to the catching. Both Castro and Corporan love to work that inside edge. Jeff Baker leads it off now in the second inning. That strike one over the outside corner to a 305 hitting Baker with nine homers, 17 runs batted in, in a platoon with Mitch Moreland at first base. That's a drive to center field. Brandon Barnes backing on it. And it's out number one. You know, good platoon from Baker's standpoint because he has been bashing left handed pitching this year. Yeah when you can get his bat against the left handers you've got one half of a very good combo. Greg Gentry the batter next. Gentry in left field. 243 one homers. 13 runs batted in. He's one for 11 in this series, but the outfield coverage with these three should be excellent for the Rangers. There's ball one. But Gentry has played a lot of center field in left. The Rangers have a premium defender there. And Martin, one of the best throwing center fielders we've seen, can go get him as well. Gentry's late on that one. And then the right fielder, Rios, is well above average, and he has nine outfield assists. Martin has seven outfield assists. Foul back and it's one and two. You know, we've liked the tempo of Oberholzer, and we noted that on Dallas Keiko last night. There you see the breakdown on Gentry, 272 against left handers. They're setting a nice pace. Yesterday's game was beautiful to watch. I thought the two pitchers combined. With Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire, just really set it up for a, a, an enjoyable game. And a quick ball game. Two balls, two strikes. Yesterday's game time was two hours, 24 minutes. Texas won it six to one. So Texas goes for a sweep of this four game series. Rangers have won seven in a row overall. They're 68 and 50 with a one game lead over Oakland. 
atop the AL West. And the Rangers have picked up Adam Rosales on a waiver claim from the A's again. It's the second time they've done it. Strikeout for Overholzer. That's number three for Brett. Well, we've talked about the changeup, and that's what this is. Leaving Gentry out in front. Just kind of reaching, trying to see if he could get a piece. Jerickson Profar, the second baseman, with a 243 average, has four bombs. He's driven in 19, two for 12 in this series for the native of Curacao. Profar's a switch hitter, hitting 190 right handed. He takes a look at that, and Oberholzer has fallen behind him 1 0. Rangers will go back home now for an eight game home stand with games against Milwaukee, Seattle, and Houston. That's in for a strike, one and one. They've had a whale of a road trip going eight and one. And they now have the best road record in the American League on a seven game road winning streak. They've gone to 35 and 26 away from Rangers ballpark in Arlington. Close. Might have been a strike yesterday. Two balls and a strike. There was a good low strike zone yesterday. I've already seen one low strike called in this sequence, but this one a little bit too low to be able to call there. That yeah, was. I would think that the good starting pitching that the Rangers bring, as well as their solid bullpen, would play well at home and on the road. But these are not again the uh, the same Texas Rangers we've seen in years gone by, where they just slug it. And I think that plays well at at the ballpark in Arlington. Well, their record at home is just about the same as it is on the road. If they have made Minute Maid Park a home, they won eight straight in this ballpark and 18 of 21. Three balls, two strikes. And reaching back in the last 36 games, the Rangers have won 29 of those from the Astros. They've already captured the season series with their 10 and 2 record in a 19 game series. That's ball four. Profar taking a walk. The second of the day for Oberholzer. And Martin will bat. Profar is 0 for 3 in base stealing. Looks across the diamond at his third base coach with Martin stepping up. He led off the game with a walk and then he was thrown out trying to steal. Now the Rangers have once again claimed Adam Rosales on waivers from the A's. He's been going back and forth between those two teams like a ping pong ball. Strike. In fact, we were hearing that he still has his bats with the Ranger ball club because he had been claimed and he had been here very briefly, but then Oakland. Reclaimed him on waivers. And they're not sure how long he's going to be with the Rangers now. Swing there and 0 and 2 for Martin because Lance Berkman continues his injury rehab assignment. Lance was 1 for 4 as a DH for Round Rock last night. The Rangers are hoping to get Lance back with them by Friday. And at that point, they would have to open up a roster spot, and that might involve Rosales again. It's got to be a joy to be a, a utility infielder. <laughs> Swing by Martin and he strikes out. That's number four for Overholzer. It's no runs and a man left. And it's 2 0 Rangers.
by popular demand. Friday, August 23rd is Dollar Dog Day at Minute Maid Park. Enjoy $1 hot dogs all game long as the Astros take on the Blue Jays. Top the night off with spectacular post-game fireworks. Call one 877 astros or visit astros.com for tickets. Guys. A lot of munching right now, Julia. As Chris Carter comes up, the DH. Those guys are the DEs, designated eaters. <laughs> Carter at 213 with 21 homers leads the club. He has 54 runs batted in and taking that pitch for ball one. I think I just discovered there is an area in which I haven't lost any skills. I could be a DE. <laughs> you, you could be a DE. Well, you guys will be munching away on that long flight to Oakland. Let's look back at the long ball yesterday from Carter. After hitting one off the scoreboard in left field, he didn't quite get the first one, but he got this one pretty good. This nice short quick swing and that's all it takes for Chris. Well he's home in back to back games now for the sixth time in his career. And lately he has 20 walks in his last 32 games as well. That's it for a strike at 90 for Darvish. I'm not sure with all the strikeouts that have occurred along with those walks you mentioned how valuable that that walk category is if it means he's going to be patient to the extreme that we've seen of late in the air and foul out of play yeah we'll find out yeah, for me uh, Chris Carter has got to be a guy that looks for a pitch tries to juice it when given the opportunity use the field when you can we've seen that he can do that but when he stands and watches strikes I'm not sure it serves him well. His 21 homers are the most by an Astro since 2010 when Hunter Pence hit 25. And Carlos Lee 24. That breaking pitch is foul back. Darvish has surrendered 18 long balls in 146 and two thirds innings. He leads the league in strikeouts, three today, giving him 195. He is second in batting average against 193 is the batting average against you Darvish. Carter puts it in the air to right field Rios coming in second baseman pro far out giving way. One out. Darvish shaking his head like he's not happy with something at this point. Getting to that 3 2 count may not have been his goal as high standards. He should with what he's done so far on the big leagues. He's given up just 102 hits. And there you see the strikeouts 195 ahead of Felix Hernandez, and Matt Harvey for the major league lead. Matt Dominguez batting fifth again today. He's been elevated in the lineup. Strike one to a 229 hitting Dominguez. 14 homers, 56 runs batted in. Since 1900, uh, the only pitchers born outside the U.S. who led the majors in strikeouts are Fernando Valenzuela and Johan Santana. No balls, two strikes, and that's the position of Darvish right now. Only Max Scherzer, with his terrific season, has been tougher in terms of the batting average against. That by a point. Darvish was born in Japan. That's out to right center field. Martin moving over for it. Now number two. Julia. Hey Brownie, Carlos Corporan coming up now for the Astros and he's been in there two days in a row. That's because Jason Castro needed a couple of extra days off after Friday night. He's feeling the effects after a collision. This one right here at home plate. It was Alex Rios coming home to score. He charged and made enough contact here with Castro to dislodge the ball from Castro's mid there. Uh, sore hip is what we're being told about. Yep, you see it right there. Yeah. Why he's hurting and uh, just needed a couple extra days. He said he should be go good to go tomorrow. Landed hard on that right hip as the ball was dislodged. So Corp gets another start, hitting 245. And sharp ground ball goes to Baker. That's six straight for the man who threw eight and two thirds perfect innings here in his first start of the year and has a two nothing lead.
history is brought to you by MD Anderson, making cancer history August 12th of 1974. Nolan Ryan strikes out 19 in a 4-2 win over the Red Sox. He breaks the American League record of Bob Feller and ties Major League's record of Steve, Steve Carlton and Tom Seaver. Those are some pretty good names to join. Of course, Nolan Ryan would prove to be the greatest strikeout pitcher of all time. And a longtime Astro and certainly deserving of having that number retired up atop the stadium. And he was here for the last couple of games of this series. Now he must have gone back to work on this Monday. Oh, he was working the last couple. <laughs> With all the folks hanging around him, he was working he hard. He was. Elvis Andrews struck out in the first inning. That's a fly ball to center field. Barnes waiting for a one pitch out for Oberholzer. Now apparently, the Rangers reclaimed Adam Rosales due to Leori Garcia being named the player to be named later in the Alex Rios trade. Ian Kinsler the batter now. Kinsler doubled to left and came around to score on a Beltre double. Oberholzer started his career by going 16 innings without a walk. Second longest such streak in Astros history. Behind Dave Veers. Ball one to Kinsler. Veers began his career with 16 and two thirds consecutive scoreless, uh, walkless innings, rather, 1994. He was a relief pitcher. Two balls, no strikes. These two teams will be meeting in Arlington, Texas. Now the infield shifts around with a count 2 and 0. Oh. More to the pull side. Elmore over on the shortstop side of the bag, but it's in the air to right field. And Krause has it. Two outs. You know it works out as Kinsler puts it in the air toward right field. But you could see what Ian Kinsler, a veteran hitter, quality hitter, did immediately when that shift went on. He said, "Well, okay, I'll go ahead and hit it to right field." He just simply put it in the air. Adrian Beltre, after his RBI double in the first inning, is hitting 4.57 on this road trip for the Rangers, going 16 for 35. Really, quite a threat. Both ways, as you mentioned, with the glove as well as the bat. A real leader on this Ranger club. Elmore's out in shallow right center, and it's a five pitch third inning for Oberholzer. 2 0 Rangers. Rangers Sports Talk Live will win. Kevin Eschenfelder wrangles up some noteworthy sports guests that have plenty of buzzworthy opinions and analysis. On today's show, the panel will be Jerome Solomon and Zance Lance Zerline, and guests will include Eric Young and Travis Johnson. Tune in to Sports Talk Live today at 5 p.m. Okay. EY is going to be on Sports Talk Live. EY. We'll be tuning in for sure. 
And Kevin himself was out here. Uh, it's a day game, so he got a chance to come out for a little while before going to work. And you Darvish now in the bottom of the third inning. Brings a two to nothing advantage. And he has retired all six men he has faced through the first two. There's Kevin himself. Saying hello to photographer Bill Baptiste. I wonder if he's figured out how to do the moonwalk so he can compete with EY. Well, that it's very difficult to compete with EY. Brandon Barnes the batter. That's strike one to Brandon who's hit three of his six home runs against Ranger pitching. With a 240 average and 25 runs batted in for Brandon, two hits in the series. Ranger pitchers have been very sturdy this season with the fourth best ERA in the American League, 3.65. And their ranks have been bolstered by the acquisition of Matt Garza. So in this series, they threw Garza Friday night. Eric Holland Saturday night and then a very impressive Martin Perez at age 22 yesterday and now Darvish. A difficult four games for the hitters and that strikeout number four for Darvish. Well this slider had its way with Brandon Barnes here you can see maybe it's like starts near the outside corner but when it's all said and done that's just an at bat you want to forget. Jake Elmore hopes to have an event to remember right here. Elmore at 247 with two homers has driven in six. Yeah, that's a tough challenge as you indicated. Right handers hitting 149 against Darvish. He delivers strike one. It's a one ball one strike count. I don't think as a right hand hitter if you can get something straight early in the count. That's what you want to be sitting on and just try to bust. Elmore is 0 for 3 against Darvish. What a play there. Beltre was drawn in. Takes care of out number two. That ball was lashed right at him. Went down to his knees. And picked it cleanly with a glove hand. Jake Elmore has a quick bat. But uh, Adrian Beltre made a pretty good living, aside from the fact that he's a great hitter. Made that living defensively as well. He is terrific. Very slick by the 34 year old veteran who won his fourth gold glove last year. And he's hard to tag when coming into third base. <laughs> Jonathan VR has returned to the starting lineup today. VR <laughs> takes ball one, 245, no homers, one RBI. You're referring to that play yesterday at third, in which uh, he was caught in a rundown and he just took off for the left field corner. <laughs> Come tag me if you can. <laughs> one ball, one strike. VR has been out with a sprained left thumb, and it doesn't bother him batting left handed. It does bother him batting right handed, so he has not played. Against the two lefties who started the last two games. The R also had sat out the Friday night game. So now back in, and he has a two and one count. The R is somebody who does bunt. Beltre in on the grass at third. And Baker is shortened up at first as well. He's even with the base there. It's a strike call and it's two and two. Adrian Beltre is a guy who's going to take the bun away from a lot of guys. Just not going to challenge him. But I think Jonathan VR has shown that he, he almost has no fear in any situation. I would never be surprised who he would bun on. Darvish gets strikeout number five. He is perfect through three and has a two to nothing lead.
for our next big and bright Friday night. The Astros take on the Toronto Blue Jays at 710. Stick around after the game for the best fireworks show in town presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. Call 1-877-9ASTROS or visit astros.com for tickets, guys. Look forward to it August 23rd against the Toronto Blue Jays. What do we listen to? Opera music, Ash? I think that's your music there, Brown. It sounded great. I think they have gone into your car and oh that's uh the wacky walk-up selection, Ave Maria by Luciano Pavarotti for AJ Przinski. Does he have a, a wacky selection that he well you can only guess. He took strike one, so Pavarotti put him in a hole. And uh, now 0 and 2. So Luciano has fallen behind in the count 0 and 2. Krasinski delivered a run producing single in the first inning. So if he makes an out, that's on Luciano, right? That's the only way I could call it. How many guys do you think have opera as their walk up selections? He punches one toward the left field corner. That's going to be a foul ball. Well, he was within a foot or so there of everybody wanting to have it. Opera gets you the extra base hit. I'll try it. And this line shot didn't miss by a whole lot. No, it did not. Luciano Pavarotti would have been proud. Great opera singers of all time. If AJ even noticed that was being played as he came to the plate. <laughs> what do they think I am, he, Bill Brown? He was deep in thought. Pitch inside, one and two. It is two to nothing. The Rangers got two in the first inning. And with two outs, they started a rally. Kinsler doubled. Beltre doubled in a run. Krasinski singled in a run. Bill Brown, Alan Ashby, Julia Morales, talking heads. Fly ball over shortstop, and that will loop in for a hit. Luciano Pavarante is two for two in this game. Guy could always hit. Career, Defense was questionable. Career 1,000 average for Luciano. That's hit number four, and now it's Alex Rios batting. Rios struck out looking in the first. Well, uh, two of those three talking heads are beginning on the plane, heading toward uh, Jeff Blum. So he may already be in Oakland by now. Where will you be headed? Home. I know you've got some call for something coming up this week. There, there might be something along those lines. In the air on the right side and foul. Brett Wallace coming over. That's out number one for Brett Oberholzer. These Astro starting pitchers, the last 11 starts, have combined for an ERA of 3.69. And they've had seven quality starts in the last 11. And in fact, since July 12th, three rookie starters currently in the rotation have each done very well. Oberholzer, Brad Peacock, and Jared Kosart have a combined 1.35 ERA in their nine combined starts in that span. Jeff Baker, the batter. Yeah, that group is not to be blamed for any difficulties of late. There you have it. Last 11 games, their record is two and four, but the ERA really much better than that. And of course, this club has been victimized by late inning problems. Good numbers though for the starters. Swing there by Baker takes the count to 0 and 2. Starters have now moved from last place in the American League in terms of ERA to 13th, and it's a it's a nice move forward. They're in front of Minnesota and Toronto in that regard. Toronto Blue Jays spent a lot of money to bring some pitching in this year, didn't they? Though Mark Burley and Josh Johnson, R.A. Dickey, one and two. Now Baker coming into this game had 11 hits in his last 29 at bats against lefties. And for the year, he's hitting 361, eight homers, 14 runs batted in against lefties, and just 61 at bats. Very impressive numbers for Baker. And he fouls that one back. 
tomorrow night you guys in Oakland. You'll be on the air by the way Ash in case you haven't yet checked. I, I, I just hate the way you use that term you guys but go ahead 830. 830 that's Houston time. So that will be 630 your time in Oakland just trying to be helpful. And you'll have Jordan Lyles and Bartolo Colon. You are nothing if not helpful. And Mr. Jeff Blum should be raring to go. In the air and that's hooked foul. Into the seats to keep the count of one and two. Now Jeff Blum has been honing his resting skills of late. And <laughs> those, those are the pitching matchups coming up. Jordan Lyles really has some work to get turned around at Love to see him be back in that strike zone come tomorrow night. You know Bartolo Colon will be. Jared Cozart and Eric Bedard. Those two have been throwing the ball well. Those are the matchups. And newcomer Sonny Gray has entered that rotation for the Oakland A's. The very confused weatherman for the A's. <laughs> That's a swing and a miss. And his strikeout number five. And Oberholzer is hanging right in there after giving up two in the first. High cheese and blows it by. And when you're feeling real frisky as a hitter, you feel like you can handle anything, and you you just let it fly early. That high fastball so difficult to get to. Well, Baker is retired for the second time, and Craig Gentry bats next. Gentry struck out earlier on a 2-2 pitch. That's grounded foul. Overholzer has already achieved a piece of Astros club history. He's the first pitcher to hurl seven or more scoreless innings in his first two major league starts. And in fact, he's the first pitcher to do that in the big leagues since September of 1980 when the Phillies right hander Marty Bystrom hurled nine innings and seven innings, both with scoreless results in his first two major league starts. One and one. As those 1980 Phillies were on a collision course with the Houston Astros for the League Championship Series that year. It took 163 games for Houston to get there and face the Phillies, and that kind of messed things up. Uh, Joe Negro had to pitch 163 in L.A. and and a huge victory, one of the great ones for the organization. Had a chance to win that series though with the Phillies. Yeah. One and two, and then you had to fly to open the series in Philadelphia, yep. so you had to go from L.A. Yep. And you're. Your timing was all off because of that extra game, so you had no rest for game one. That made well, it. nonetheless, the Astros took a two games to one lead in that best of five series, and we were playing in the Astrodome and had leads late in games four and five and saw them get away. Over toward the line, Mark Krause coming. Krause makes the running catch. It's no runs a hit and a man left. Over Holzer keeping it close, two to nothing Rangers after three and a half. Time for trivia. Today's trivia is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Prior to you, Darvish, 
Who was the last starting pitcher to be named as an All Star in his first two seasons? I may be going back too far with that one. I I, I have an old ex Tiger of the 70s in mind, but I have a feeling it's much fresher than that. Ex Tiger of the 70s. Oh okay. come on, Ronnie. Bobby Grossman leads it off. Mark the bird. Oh, well, I was going to suggest Fernando Valenzuela. But that oh, is probably wow. going going too far back also, right? I don't know. Fernando is wrong. Is uh, we, we need to find out. Is that is that too far back in the way back machine? There is. It's okay. about the right era. It was a little bit after Fernando. So your guess would be a good one. Well, no, no, Mark, you'd be going further back. Mark Vidrich is too far back. Yeah, he's too far back. He's already a fossil by the time this guy comes around. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. So two Darvish in select company there. The All Star selections his hmm. first two years. Well, I, I'm wondering about a. A guy with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, Dave Steve. Oh, Dave Steve. That is not right either. I would have thought Dave Steve had a chance to be that guy. Let's see. How about Doc Good. You know, well, he's he's in the uh, mid 80s though. Yeah. Gooden showed up. He was there for 86, as I recall. Well, Fernando was 80 and 81. Well, right? that's true. That's not that's too true. long after that. Is it Doc Gooden? We can't say. Because we haven't been told the answer yet. A fellow named Dwight. Dwight Howard? Eisenhower? Oh no. Still two and two. I think you've nailed it. A lot of talk about Dwight Howard in this city. Off the plate, and it's three and two. By the way, uh, have you heard the name Jose Abreu? I have. What has that been in reference to lately? I. Have... It's in reference to perhaps the greatest Cuban slugger who might be playing Major League Baseball. He's just defected from Cuba, somewhere in the Caribbean, according to Twitter reports. Greater than, than home run champion uh, Jonas Cespedes? Well, yes. Supposedly. That's oh. strikeout number six for Darvish. First of all, the answer to this trivia question last pitcher to be an all star's first two years. Oh, my good night. There you go. Right. You busted that one. Just fell into it. But this uh, Jose Dario Abreu is in the Caribbean, supposedly, according to reports. He's 26 years old. He hit 19 homers and 264 at bats in Cuba, which doesn't tell you much. But in the World Baseball Classic, uh, he was 9 for 25, three homers, nine runs batted in. Mark Kraus, the batter. He struck out first time. There's strike one. And supposedly, uh, he is going to command top dollar on the free agent market when he becomes a free agent. And that could mean a package of 70 to 80 million dollars, according to one report. And uh, supposedly the Rangers and the Red Sox would be two clubs who might be going for him because they have situations at first base requiring upgrading in the opinions of some and they have the money to pay. So this guy's a first sacker. Yep. Yeah these teams uh, you talk about the Rangers and the Red Sox they have some experience at this sort of dealing. Strike one and two. I would assume no posting charge, or is there? No, not for not for Cubans. It's not like uh, New Darvish in Japan, because he's not owned by any professional team. And uh, according to reports, he has escaped Cuba, so that makes him completely free once he establishes residency in another country. In the air behind third base, this on the left field side is caught by Gentry. And that's out number two, and that is 11 straight retired by Darvish. So that's a name to watch for somewhere down the road. Abreu. Fred Wallace was caught looking in the first when Darvish struck out the side. 
And Darvish is looking about like he did in game two of the season, Ash. Yeah, I would say that the box score looks rather similar right now. Nary a base runner for Houston. I wonder if you Darvish has allowed himself to consider the possibilities. Well, he certainly was considering them uh, back on the second game. When he had that perfect game for eight and two thirds and Marwin Gonzalez hit that ground ball right by him. For the only hit. Classy reaction by Darvish at the time. It really was. He, he had that smile on his face. Yep. Everybody wants it and and when it doesn't happen especially that close to the finish line. You have to you have to be extremely disappointed but uh, he just reacted so beautifully. Fastball and it's one eight two. That's a little more of what the Astros bats need to do right now in my opinion. Air it out take some good swings. This guy's not going to pitch around anybody. Well Ron Washington took him out after that eight and two thirds inning start here the seven nothing win on April 2nd because of the pitch count. Mm. But he had no walks and 14 strikeouts in that game in eight and two thirds innings. He was throwing harder that day. Yep. This afternoon he hasn't had the, the gifted fastball. He can break it out once in a while. It's kind of been in that range 91 92. One time we've seen him light it up to 95, but he was steadily in that mid 90s range, as I recall, early on that first start of his on the year. Yeah. And the odd thing is that uh, he has thrown fastballs only 39% of the time this year. Last year he threw that fastball 49% of the time. Is that a matter of maybe not feeling like he's throwing as hard or that he's learned something? Well, the results are certainly the same so far. Through four innings perfect you Darvish and a two nothing Texas lead. August 24th as the Astros take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Be sure to get to Minute Maid Park early as 10,000 fans will receive an orange home replica jersey courtesy of Coca-Cola. Call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com for tickets. Brownie and Ash, just a quick update on Altuve who is out today and we kind of figured that would happen with Jonathan VR coming back in. Altuve needed a break with that left quad he's been dealing with but he did tell me today that it does feel better today than it did two days ago. He even got in the ready position for me and moved around a little bit. Said he is available and uh, hasn't been very good against you Darvish. This is probably a good day for him. There's strike one to Jerkson Profar two nothing Rangers Profar drill walk in the second inning. Yeah Bo Porter talked with that uh, about that with the media and the fact that they're working with Jose Altuve to manage that injury a little bit better and uh, to learn when he can run sort of under control when you know he tried to really bust it a couple of times Ash unfortunately when a guy's trying to nurse that injury it almost seems inevitable that he has to try to go for an extra base or something and I think that hurt him. Crazy quirk of this game but I, I think it's great news that he feels better today. Barnes in in center field. 
because of the fact he had to run so much and hard yesterday if he got through that it, it would seem he's moving in the right direction. True. But we want to remind you to tune in to Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 930 on CSN. Chevy Hometown Kids where it's not about the score but the experience. Uh, these kids are having a great experience. They'll be headed back to school soon. Now here is Leone Smartine who walked and struck out around the butt and he takes strike one that brings in Dominguez at third. The athletics have already won their game today. That's the only other day game they won at Toronto five to one with a four run ninth. Taken for a ball so the athletics are now sixty seven and fifty the Rangers are sixty eight and fifty. Rangers will need a win today to stay one game in front of Oakland. Big cut there, and it's one and two to Martin. As Ron Washington's club is in a race, good race in the AL West. Yeah, I have a feeling that Texas Rangers right about now have some pretty good respect for what they've seen with the young pitching from the Astros, the starting pitching in this series. Bouncer up the middle. The R throws out the speedy Martin. Two outs. Good play. He had to range pretty far to his left. Because of the great feet of VR and the strong throwing arm, once he got to this ball, he still didn't have to rush. Winds up making it rather routinely. Takes the couple of extra hops and strong arm to get the out. Elvis Andrews is over two, a strikeout and a fly ball to center. Ryan, Ryan Cook was that winner for Oakland and relief. Go ahead. Yeah, my bad, Brown. A talented young man at shortstop, and you can sure project him as a long timer at that position. Yes. Oh, Porter likes him very much. Strike one to Andrews. In that Oakland game, Dan Straley was the starter. He gave up one run in seven and a third. And Jay Happ, rebounding from that uh, terrible that fracture in his skull, he pitched very well today for Toronto. Seven innings, three hits, one run. But uh, Casey Jansen lost it as Oakland came up with four in the ninth inning off him, the Toronto closer, and Cook was the winner to go five and two. That Oakland club are really pressing the Rangers. Chris Young hit his tenth home run, and that was in the first inning off Hap. So quite a race. But as you look around the standings, Ash, there are some non-races in the AL West. It's really close at the top there, but. Some of these other divisions not close at all. And the primary example is the NL East Atlanta leading second place Washington by 14 and a half games. Yeah that will not be an intriguing final month of the season. VR throws high and Wallace is able to bring that throw down and put the tag on Andrews and make it a one two three fifth for Oberholzer and a two nothing Texas lead.
game. It's from L.J. Hose, who is new to the Astros. He said, just ate some good food in Houston. I love this city. Hose with a day off today. Porter trying to get the left-handed bats in there, but he's played almost every day since, or every day since being with the Astros, and good to hear he likes Houston. Guys? Well, you also are a relative newcomer to Houston, Julia. Yes. Do you find the food any different at all than uh, your other stops in Texas? Well, yeah, I'm a Texas girl, so I just like Texas food. Yeah. Strike one to Carter. 12 straight have been retired by you, Darvish, but do you think the East Texas uh, food is, is any different at all than up in North Texas? Ooh, there's some good food in East Texas, and there's good food in Austin, Texas. I, I found some restaurants that I really enjoy here, though, as well. Uh, I mean, you're, I'm going to go blank right now, but I'm getting around. I'm learning. Yeah. I even tweeted about it the other day. I was like, you know, if anybody has any recommendations, send them my way. Oh, you'll get some. I'm going to have to challenge Julia a bit. I, I've noticed she's been okay with food in other parts of the country as well. <laughs> this, One and two. this is true. <laughs> so now when you think of uh, Oakland, what's your specialty there, Ash? Oakland, For Julia. Yeah. Oakland. Well, San Francisco. That's you know, you got to go seafood there, Julia. Right. I had seafood last time I was there with you. Yeah. We had some delicious fish. We really did. What did we have anyway? That was a long time ago too. That was months ago. Early April. Rock and out. That's number eight. Well, you'll come up with something along those lines. Fisherman's Wharf is nice. Yeah, fastball just gets thrown right on by here. But the thing about San Francisco is you can you can do ethnic uh, variety while you're there for a few days. Yeah, really, really great in that regard. Well, you Darvish uh, kind of has that flavor too. His father is uh, Iranian. And uh, look at those results for you Darvish. Matt Dominguez takes ball one high. Dominguez hit a fly ball to center in the second inning. Batters have swung and missed on 32% of their swings against Darvish this year. It's the highest rate against any major league pitcher who qualifies in terms of innings pitched. It's 2 0. Well, what would you think of him? Uh, not really as a Cy Young guy, right? He's 11 and 5, 2.72 ERA. What do you think, Ash? No, I, I can't see the Cy Young going that direction this year. It's. I, what I was going to say about you Darvish though right here is if he is thinking at all and he should be about the possibilities this afternoon he's put himself in a great spot with the 60 now two pitches and that one was very close as he works in the fifth inning giving himself a chance to maybe go deep and, and have a shot well he can't be perfect if he walks a guy and he's behind three and oh. I would say same pitch that has been called ball a couple of times here with Dominguez at the plate, but a pitch that uh, is is right where the pitchers want it. Now back by Domingo, it's three and two to Matt Dominguez. Now if you're talking Cy Young Award right now for me in the American League, Matt, Max Scherzer with his 17 wins already, one loss. Not sure how you get by him. No, you can't get by him. As a 2.84 ERA, that's sixth best, seventh best in the American League. Slightly higher than Darvish, but those 17 wins speak loudly. That's strike three. After falling behind 3-0, he gets his ninth punch out. And as he picks up the strikeout, watch he doesn't come with a 3 2 give in fastball. He bends one in, and Matt Dominguez knew he'd been had. That is part of what makes Darvish so difficult is that he's not afraid to throw any pitch, any count, and he knows he can throw it for a strike. That's 201 strikeouts for Darvish this year. And uh, that might require some monitoring. Young man's making solid contact. Where's the parent in that row? Carlos Corp in the batter. Probably sitting right behind. There's ball one. Corp grounded out to first base, hit the ball pretty sharply in the second inning. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that group, by the way, for you. We may have to send someone down. Big brother always watching these children at the ballpark to make sure they behave. Cameras are everywhere, kids. 
Brandon Barnes on deck. That's it in the air toward the left field line. A long run for Gentry. It's slicing and it's foul. One ball, one strike. Well, we remember very well the electricity of that April 2nd game here with Darvish and his perfect game bid. Taking that two outs in the ninth inning, and then Marwin Gonzalez broke it up with a sharp single up the middle. And that meant the exit for Darvish in his very first start of the year. I was just about to ask you if Marwin's gotten the call yet this afternoon to get here to Houston <laughs> as quickly as possible. Yeah, exactly. Bouncer first and foul. Makes it one and two. And you Darvish did not have a complete game last year, and he does not have one this year. Imagine that, and yet he can say he was one out away from a perfect game. What a start he's made to his major league career, and he's not yet 27. Well, for a few more days, he's not 27. Where could this career go? He's 27 and 14 with a 3.39 ERA. Two balls and a strike. Turns to a splitter. He's got all the pitches. He really does. He's got a changeup and a splitter, and a cutter, and a slider, and a curve, and a fastball. There's ball three. It's three and two. Apparently, as a kid, he had every toy he could possibly want. In addition to that, he's six five. Now, Corp, will take a little walk. Well, that, that's one technique that hitters like to use when a guy is perfect. Through four and two thirds, make him wait a little bit. Should an umpire allow that? Gets strikeout anyway. He strikes out the side in the fifth inning. Second time he's done that today. That's 10 strikeouts and a 2 0 lead. Darvish perfect through five. to join us tomorrow as the Astros head west to take on the Oakland A's. Coverage begins at 8.30 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet, your home of your home team. Okay. Well, Julia, you were busy just now reading that promo. Well, we witnessed a marriage proposal up on El Grande, the big screen here. And uh, a special moment, but he put the ring on the, her right hand. Oh, no. Yeah, he did, Julia. Now they've switched it, but... <laughs> Initially, he went for the right hand. They look happy. They so, do does that happy. qualify as an official proposal when you mess up like that? I guess that counts. I think he needs a redo count. on that one. Are they off work? What are these? It's Monday afternoon. Uh, yeah, they're taking the day off to get married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it over the screen. 
And that's strike one to Kinsler. Kinsler doubled in the first inning. He's one for two. Well, you shouldn't have to work if you're proposing, right? No, nobody answers. That sounds like the great debate going on. No, no one answers these questions. <laughs> Fly ball to right. Mark Krause comes in. Just, just nothing but silence. That's out number one. And Beltre will be coming up next. <laughs> that started you know, with the standard kiss too, with the uh, <laughs> yeah kiss inning, and it did. It started with kiss cam and evolved into a marriage proposal. Well, with that double, uh, first time up, Beltre has passed Jeff Bagwell on the all time doubles list with 489. 66th place. Mickey Vernon of the old Washington Senators. And uh, that's appropriate because the Rangers were at one time the Washington Senators. Well, he's next up on Beltre's list. Let's see who's been passed on that list. Mel Ott. Oh, boy. Well, we talked about it the other night. The first night of the series, Ash, with Beltre, that he is on a Hall of Fame path depending on how many more years he plays and whether he continues to play at this level. Yeah, he has not had a messed up career to this point. He's loading it up with gold gloves and a lot of praise as being the third baseman in the American League. A lot of times people ask the question, what, was this guy ever the best in, at what he did? A ball deep to left field headed for the wall and that one will be fielded by Robbie Grossman it came up short and he comes in with a double as Beltre has his second of the game the 26th double of the year Looked like that ball was better hit than that coming off the bat let's see I think this must have been right off the end of the bat good swing Ball not really drilled, and then the defense got shabby at this point. I don't know if Beltre was going to come. It's hard to say watching him come around first base. Well, there's Ave Maria again, Ash. Well, it, he's two for two on the game, so why not? Luciano Pavarotti singing once again for AJ Krasinski. Wacky walk up selection. So whether he selected it or uh, or not, he's two for two with it with an RBI. If he winds up with a game where he gets three or more hits, I, I don't think see where he has any choice for the rest of his career but to go with Pavarotti. Well, back for strike one. AJ was born in Bridgehampton, New York. Went to high school at the famous Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida, where he listened to Pavarotti every day. Are you sure about that, or are you no. just dishing us some stuff? I made that up. There's a shot, one hop. Dominguez checking Beltre at second, throwing out Pierzynski. And look at the pitcher Overholzer winding up at third base. With some muscle, that's out number two. This ball hit more sharply than the two base hits by Pierzynski on the game. Just proving that there is no justice in this game at times. Except for Richard that is. Richard Justice. Rich, Richard Justice one of the uh, one of the best at what he does. And he's in the game. And did you see on that replay. That Oberholzer was sprinting right off the mound toward third base. To cover third. When the throw went over to first. He's got his head in the game doesn't he. Yeah. Now it's Rios batting. Rios is 0 for 2. I think Overholzer really looks like he wants to seize this opportunity to be a major league starting pitcher. There's ball one. And certainly coming through the Atlanta system, as Brett did, can be daunting for a starting pitcher. As many pitchers as they have developed and and what excellence they have at the major league level keeping pitchers in the minor leagues. So he got a break when he was traded for Michael Bourne. 2 0, but then he had to take advantage of it. And in 2011, after that trade, he had been at Double A Mississippi for the Braves and having a good year. Well, he went to Corpus and made six starts at Corpus Christi. He was 2 and 3 with a 5.27 ERA. Then last year, he was 5 and 3 at Corpus with a 4.21. 
and made 15 starts for Oklahoma City, five and seven with a 4.52 there. Fly ball, lazy one outside the right field line. Wallace giving chase, and so the numbers were not all that compelling coming to spring training this year for Brett Overholzer. He just turned 24. Still plenty of time to develop an eighth round pick of the Braves in 08 and now his stock has risen very high compared to where it was a couple of years ago. He's been known as a guy with no real plus pitch but uh, above average command of all of his pitches. And he just seems to mix them together very intelligently. Now back. Two balls, two strikes to Rios. Yeah, most people really like what they're seeing of Oberholzer in his third major league start. Remembering that he was a reliever when he first came up, and that was against Cleveland, his major league debut here, April 21st. He gave up a homer to the first batter he faced, Carlos Santana of the Indians. Inside ball three, and then the, in that two inning relief stand, he gave up another homer to Drew Stubbs. He was sent right back down to Oklahoma City, back up in early July for two relief appearances. One at Texas, a good one, three and a third innings, one run, and then back down again until late July. Swing and a miss there, and Rios is down on strike. So Overholzer against this perfect game bit of Hugh Darvish pitching well himself, two to nothing Rangers. And baseball or a unique space in which to hold your next event with state of the art meeting spaces Minute Maid Park can surpass all of your needs. Call 713-259-8800 for more information. Don't forget to ask about softball games and batting practice. If you're going to face you Darvish you better take some batting practice. Oh, goodness. And then Barnes leads it off 15 straight have been retired by Darvish in this game. Perfect game through five. He throws strike one to Barnes. Barnes struck out, leading off the third. Now you can schedule batting practice in a hotel lobby against Darvish and not do any damage. Popped up. Krasinski almost hit the home plate umpire while discarding his mask. Ball is out of play. Except for that guy. Julia Morales getting involved in a little. Dance skit. I'm safe nowhere in this ballpark. You're going to be on dance fever pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> you in orbit. 
Orbit is the best dance partner. I'll Did give you, him that. Have you seen uh, Orbit's little routine on the uh, big board before the games? The on flash dance. Flash it's dance. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. To the song Maniac, which is Ash's favorite. <laughs> Talk about that strikeout number 11. Wow, a couple of breaking balls to start it, and then just slips the cheese right on by. Now oh, this is masterful. You're looking for the breaking ball. You've seen a couple already. They've been really good. He doesn't need it. Yeah, I want to know who uh, who got in that costume and did that that dance routine you refer to. I thought it was you. <laughs> well, don't put too much money on that bet. Jake Elmar hits one to center field. Martin back. That's out number two, getting that one on one pitch. He's at 75 pitches in the game, still perfect through five and two thirds with VR coming up. The official scorer has changed the ruling in the top of the inning on Beltre, changing his double to a single and an E7 on Grossman. I'm good with that call. Robbie dropped the ball. And Beltre had that little hesitation, as you might have noticed on the replay, before going on to second. Didn't figure in any scoring. And now Jonathan VR. The arm struck out in the third inning. Showing body take strike one. The career high for strikeouts for you, Darvish, in a game is 14. Of course, the Astros, as a team, have struck out more than any other club this year, and the number of double digit strikeouts for the club is sky high. But I was wondering just a moment ago. What is the earliest point in a ball game at which they have struck out into double digits this year? Not sure about that. This, this could be it. Yeah, this afternoon, final out of the fifth inning, got to ten. Now only oh, two. One or two, and you know, ironically, with high strikeout numbers like this, that can actually hurt a pitcher yes. who's trying to pitch a perfect game. No doubt. The problem is, is if you're a manager and you Darvish gets himself through say seven innings and is approaching 100 pitches you can squirm all you want but how do you take a guy out. And Wash was squirming April 2nd with that because Darvish's Darvish's pitch count was higher than Wash wanted but he had a perfect game going so he immediately pulled him after eight and two thirds when that perfect game was broken up by Marwin Gonzalez. Two now to BR. And that is not strike three. Krasinski was headed for the dugout. Ron Culpa did not call him a strike. That was get up and fire in time. Up to see up at the front of the plate there where that one passes. Well, Ron Culpa is gutsy to not give that on a guy. Dealing along with a, a perfect game. He is. And now it's ball four, and now AJ gets right in his face because of the previous call, and he's out of the game. Oh, that's just wrong. Just wrong. Umpires become bigger than the game. And Ron Washington has lost his starting catcher, AJ Pierzynski. And the perfect game bid is gone. 17 straight had been retired by Darvish before the walk to VR. Clearly ball four. The pitch before is the one that Pierzynski wanted and no doubt he said uh, thanks for blowing the, the perfect game here. And then says where was the magic in that refrain. That's a charging umpire. That's an umpire who wants confrontation. Who is the aggressor in that duo? That's just wrong. Yeah, you're the one. Now, take a look at the video. Zinski with 100 consecutive errorless games tossed from this one. And now the backup catcher, Giovanni Soto, comes in. Darvish throwing a few pitches to stay loose. As Soto settles in behind the plate. 
Soto was the catcher yesterday in Texas six to one win the complete game win for Martin Perez. How many no hitters in the history of this game have been thrown. With more than one catcher behind oh, the dish. Oh, that is really a question. Very good question. Don't have the answer. The are on with the walk. Astros have 24 steals since July 27th, the most in the majors. VR has 10 in 13 tries. Grossman has struck out twice. A little lob toss over to first. Base runners are so very precious with Darvish on the mound. He's averaging just under 12 strikeouts per nine innings. He has already struck out 11. In five and two thirds today, he's averaging 6.3 hits per nine innings. Second best figure in the American League. No hits today for the Astros and a 2 0 lead for Darvish, shooting for win number 12. Strike one to Grossman. Uh, keeping in mind that the All Star break came later in the season than many years. Darvish had more strikeouts prior to the All Star break than anybody in Rangers club history and the most in the majors since 2002. And for a strike, and Grossman falls behind 0 and 2. Looks like you Darvish took a little umbrage at maybe some of the recent calls. That fastball up to 95. There is pressure on the home plate umpire, certainly, with a perfect game underway by the pitcher. And that's what came into play with Krasinski arguing that pitch earlier in the count. The 2 2 pitch that was called ball three. Runner going, and the ball is dropped. Soto couldn't get possession of it. And it's a steal by VR. It is 11. And just like that, the Astros with a base hit here can put a run on the board. VR is going to run. Uh, this is just what he does. And he creates problems for the defense. Just got a release that left handed reliever Wesley Wright has been sold to Tampa Bay by the Astros. And right handed pitcher Philip Umber is being promoted from Oklahoma City to Houston. Wesley Wright going to the Tampa Bay Rays for cash considerations. Umber will join the Astros in Oakland tomorrow night. Two balls, two strikes. I'll say this Joe Madden has had a track record of taking guys that maybe weren't tearing it up and then turning them into very successful pitchers, players, whatever. Great point, Ash. And he loves to wheel and deal with those relief pitchers. A lot of one batter performances there. VR takes off for third. There's a grounder and it goes foul off the bat of Grossman. So VR's doing what he can do on the bases now. Let's go back and see that. Pitch that was debated by H. A. Pierzynski. From the front, obviously it's it's close. Is it low? Is it there? Front of the plate. Look there at the knees in the front. It is below the knees. And so, as it turns out, it would appear, at least from that side view, to be a good call. And a swing and a foul tip for a strikeout. That's number 12. And the no hitter remains intact for you Darvish through six also a two nothing Ranger lead without Krasinski.
matchup is brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. Jordan Lyles on the mound. First career appearance against Oakland. He draws 14 game winner Bartolo Colon. Colon 3 0 with a 1.89 ERA against the Astros with a 2.75 ERA for the season. Terrific year for Bartolo Colon and Jordan Lyles is 4 6 as he opposes Bartolo tomorrow night. Miles on the bench as Oberholzer works inning number seven, trailing two to nothing. He's allowed five hits. First pitch here is strike one to Baker, and Oberholzer's game is being greatly overshadowed by Darvish, who has a no hitter through six. Ground ball to shortstop VR. One out. And meanwhile, Oberholzer, who gave up two runs in the first inning, has been very effective in his own way. Yeah, you take this any time. Problem is, he's up against the steamroller. Greg Gentry is struck out and flied to right. He takes that for ball one. Trevor Crow, the outfielder, has been reinstated from the disabled list. He's been optioned to AAA Oklahoma City. He just completed a rehab assignment there. He'd been on the DL with an AC joint injury in his right shoulder. Two balls, no strikes. Rangers' record over the last five seasons, 567 winning percentage, is the second best in the majors behind the Yankees over the last five years. Three balls, no strikes. Jackie Moore, the bench coach for Ron Washington. Dave Magadan, the hitting coach there. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach. All have worked together well for many good Rangers seasons recently. Three balls and a strike. And when they go back home, they'll draw Milwaukee. Tomorrow night, Alexi Ogando against Marco Estrada, and then Matt Garza and Tyler Thornburg. On Wednesday, they have an off day Thursday. So, an eight game homestand. The Astros coming in for the final three of that. Seattle will be there for the middle three. So, three more opponents coming up for Texas under 500. And they are making some hay right now. Their schedule will turn tougher when they get to September, and Oakland's will turn easier. Punch, and there's a good play by Wallace who juggles it a bit but gets to first base ahead of Gentry. Good positioning allowing him to be right there and let his hands make the play for out number two. Brett Wallace just continues to pitch, or not Brett Wallace, Brett Oberholzer continues to pitch great baseball. Boy, he attacks the strike zone. He has been outstanding. He's at 94 pitches, as you see. Jerickson Profar has walked and fly to center. Overholzer began the season as the 20th ranked prospect in the Houston organization by Baseball America. Strike one to Profar. The Rangers are eight and one. Here at Minute Maid Park. Their only loss here was on opening night. Past the diving VR into left center field. Barnes over to make the pickup. Big turn at first by Profar. He's on with a two out hit. He's got some range. He is yet to really land many of these. Really tough plays to one side or the other to see how he does in terms of that athleticism. But you know, with his wheels and his just general athletic ability, he's going to make a bunch. Josh Fields is warming up for Houston. Throw going over to first. Okay, Brownie, I've just taken a look through the history of no hitters in Major League Baseball. And to my accounting, since 1900, modern baseball, I found three games that had more than one catcher. Interesting. Strike to Martin. And uh, how many no hitters have we had? Well over. Oh goodness. If you if you go all the way back, the list 
of no hitters says 281. Okay. Now that goes back into the 1800s. Tim Lincecum with the most recent of the no hitters. Of course, Homer Bailey had the two previous to that. And you say three have been caught by more than one catcher. That is the way my eye picks it up without just going crazy over looking at this list of names. Okay. Sounds like you're kind of going crazy over it already. Kind of getting there. Runner going, line drive, headed for the left field line. But the runner is deep at second base, and he's not going to advance. Uh, he went ahead first at second base. Martin winding up with a single as Profar does not advance to third on a sharp single through the left side. Now the Rangers are winning, and they've been winning a lot of ball games, and that provides guys the opportunity to smile and not feel a whole lot of pressure, but. It's not very good when you can get deep to this extent. It's two outs. Pick up your third base coach. Head down. Stuff happens like that. At this point, take a glance. Good job by Jonathan VR to act as if he was receiving a throw, and so Profar went in head first. Meanwhile, the ball went into left field, and he stayed at second. Oberholzer now has reached. 98 pitches. Elvis Andrews, a right handed batter, coming up. And that's going to be it with right handed pitcher Josh Fields coming in. Texas 2, Houston nothing back in a moment. First pitch strikes and 28 opportunities. He leaves after six and two thirds innings. The crowd very appreciative. He is up against a very difficult game by you, Darvish, who has a no hitter through six, and Overholzer has kept his club right in. Yeah, he deserves that round of applause right there, and maybe more. Uh, this is a very auspicious beginning to a starting career for a young lefty. Now, Josh Fields comes in. Facing Elvis Andrews. Andrews is 0 for 3. Fields is 1 and 2. His ERA 7.59. He inherits two base runners. Fly ball center field to Barnes. And on one pitch, Fields puts out the fire in the seventh inning with no runs, two hits, two men stranded. It's still 2 nothing Rangers.
Stretch, and we have you, Darvish, who has thrown a no hitter through six. Breaking balls all over the place. Fastball spotted well, catching hitters off guard when he does bring it. He'll put it on the corners. It's just been classic you, Darvish, once again. The Astros hitters are not having a jolly time against him this year. He has a 2 nothing lead. He has a new first baseman as well. Mitch Moreland coming in to play first for Jeff Baker. As Ron Washington goes to his defensive specialist at first. And with the 2 nothing lead and the no hitter underway for Darvish, he now has a new catcher since the game began in Soto with the ejection of Pierzynski in the sixth. And now to the seventh inning for Darvish, who struck out 12 and walked one. Mark Krause has struck out and he's fly to left. It's in for a strike. I think it's kind of fun to look back on, on some of the games and talk about these three games that I can find since 1900 that needed more than one catcher to complete the no hitter. But the most recent one and it's kind of timely with the Astros heading this evening out to Oakland. Ray Fossey. Outstanding catcher, longtime broadcaster now with the Oakland A's, was involved in the most recent of those multi catcher no hitters. Oh, was he? 1975, he and Gene Tennis. Tennis was the starting catcher and worked six innings, and then Fossey was summoned from the catching bullpen. And uh, that was actually a game that saw the A's utilize four pitchers. Pot of Blue started. Glenn Abbott, Paul Lindblad, and Raleigh Fingers to close it out. Two innings for Fingers. So a little more understandable that there would be a catching change with multiple pitchers involved. Yeah, I, I think that's certainly more understandable. The one prior to that uh, was with the Chicago Cubs. Ken Holtzman with the first of his no hitters. He threw it to Bill Heath and Gene Oliver. Fly ball over shortstop. Andrews going back. Gentry calls him off and makes the catch. And that could have been. A disastrous outcome for the no hit bid. And you don't know if it was an injury or an ejection or whatever. Bill Heath, seven and two third innings, and Gene Oliver, maybe a, a matchup righty versus lefty catcher. Gene Oliver came in for an inning and a third. Can you do that? Can you match up a catcher righty uh, versus lefty? Well, he could, but pretty unconventional. They avoid the collision. Gentry takes it. Now, Brett Wallace, he has struck out both times today. Question coming for you, though, about being a catcher in Soto's shoes and coming into a game like this with a no hitter underway. And that's toward the line and left. Gentry with a good job. This is where the outfield coverage pays off for Ron Washington. In Gentry in left field, you've got a Quality center fielder playing there, so he's uh, he's a guy you, if you're a pitcher, that you love having covering that portion of the field. He can move and he gets great jumps. Now two outs and it's Carter batting. Carter is flying to right and struck out. So if you're Soto and you're called into a game and your pitcher has a no hitter going, how much into that game have you been? Yeah, I think that could be really tough. Soto uh, appears to have probably gotten by the tough part. Uh, I think once you catch behind a hitter or two, you probably settle in a bit. And you gain the confidence of your pitcher. He's no longer thinking about the new guy back there. It's no balls, two strikes. Darvish appears to be totally unruffled, and that's the way he was. Even when he gave up that hit to spoil the perfect game here, April 2nd. The first of the three no hitters that required more than one catcher is intriguing also. Carter swings and strikes out. Not a good swing at all. That's 13 strikeouts and through seven, Darvish continues his no hit bit with a 2 0 lead.
with Astros Baseball. Whether you're treating your employees, hosting clients, or bringing out your church or youth sports team, we will create an experience your group is sure to remember. Call one eight seven seven nine astros or visit astros.com to enjoy special pricing and great benefits by reserving your group or suite today, guys. Thanks, Julia. It's two to nothing still. The Rangers lead it. They have all seven hits in the game. Josh Fields came in to end the seventh inning, and he got Andrews. Now Kinsler leads it off, taking ball one. Ian had a double and scored the first run back in the two run first for the Rangers. Fields throwing ball two. 18,712, the paid attendance for this finale of the homestand. Adrian Beltre is on deck. Giovanni Soto to follow. That comes in for a strike on the changeup from Fields. And it's two and one. Josh saved the only game the Astros have won on this homestand. That was last Monday, the 2 0 win over Boston. Tap the third, Dominguez. Strong throw. He gets Kinsler one out. That'd be a good slot, Brownie, to talk about that first of the three no hitters that required more than one catcher. That game was started back in 1917 by Babe Ruth. He didn't get an out in the first inning. And Fellow by the name of Ernie Shore came in, pitched the next nine innings without a hit. It was a no hitter and it required two catchers, one named Pinch Thomas, the other Sam Agnew. Strike one to Beltre. Beltre is two for three. Well, yeah, Ernie Shore came in and he retired 27 in a row after yep. Babe Ruth was tossed out of that game. Babe just hungry for a hot dog or something at the time? Or? He was arguing a Ball four call. But kind of similar to this game with AJ Przinsky arguing a ball and strike call. No balls, two strikes. So, so there's your three existing no hitters that required more than one catcher. Well, Fields, after that excellent outing, saving the two nothing win, striking out all four men he faced, ran into problems in another game of that Boston series. And this one a foul ball. Wallace drifting over for it. It's out of play. Josh came in with a 5 4 lead in the ninth inning. And he wound up with a blown save and the loss. Throwing a curveball that wound up being hit for a three run homer by Stephen Drew. Then in the opener of this series, he came in and gave up two runs in one third of an inning. This fly ball over the second baseman into right center field for a hit for Beltre. A three hit game for Beltre. His average has bumped up since starting the day at 320. Just a good hitter and a dangerous one at that. Just dunk it into right center field. Lefty Kevin Chapman is warming up for Houston. Giovanni Soto at 216 bats for the first time. He has six homers, 15 runs batted in for Soto. And it's ball one to Soto. Soto one for four with an RBI in this series. That was a double yesterday off lefty Dallas Keuchel. Two balls no strikes. The Rangers have won 12 of their last 13. Putting together quite a run there is Chapman warming up. Their 68 and 50 record is very close to their best 118 game record in their history, which was 69 and 49 in 1999. Two balls, one strike to Soto. This would be the best uh, road trip in Rangers history if they win it. Trips of seven games or more. Strike makes it two and two. The Astros, though, will have Dominguez, Corporan, and Barnes do up in the bottom of the eighth against you, Darvish. Swing and a miss there, and Soto's down on strikes. Out number two. That high fastball from Josh Fields is very good. Not everybody's going to offer on this pitch, but 
when we have seen him bring that pitch and get a swing we're just not seeing contact at all. Two outs and Alex Rios is 0 for 3. His 11 game hitting streak on the line. Fields drops a curveball on him and it's strike one. An excellent day for Brett Oberholzer. Six and two thirds innings. Seven hits, two runs, walking two, fanning six. He threw 98 pitches, 69 for strikes. Through 20 of 28 first pitch strikes. And it's his third straight quality start since joining the Astros rotation. Rios looks it over and it's ball two. Mitch Moreland is on deck. You Darvish has thrown 96 pitches through seven. Seven no hit innings for Darvish walking one fanning 13. Out to left field. Bobby Grossman handles it. And in the eighth it's no runs a hit and a man left bottom of the eighth coming Darvish tries to continue a no hit bid with a two nothing lead. VTV is celebrating 11 years with new low yearly prices. Watch every out of market game live or on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV Baseball Everywhere. Those are the no hitters pitched by Texas Rangers. Jim Bibby, Burp Fly 11 2 by Nolan Ryan, and the perfect game by Kenny Rogers. Most recent no hitter, July 28th of 94 against the Angels. Hugh Darvish has a no hitter through seven today. Matt Dominguez leads it off in the home eighth inning. Dominguez has fly to center and struck out looking. 13 strikeouts for Darvish. And ball one is outside. Stuff has been very sharp for Darvish today. One ball, one strike. And that's what he comes with on the 1 0. He's done it all day long. There's, you can't really say maybe that feeling here late in the ball game that he's going to turn away from maybe throwing fastballs when he's behind in the count. He just mixes it up. Through 130 pitches against Detroit back on May 16th. Went eight innings, gave up four runs in that game. A 10 to 4 win for Darvish.
Try Jen Lowe is warming up for the Astros. Corporate on deck. Barnes due up third in the inning. And for a strike. Two and two. So Philip Umber rejoins the Astros tomorrow night in Oakland, replacing Wesley Wright, who was sold to Tampa Bay this afternoon. Peel goes to first check swing call makes it three balls two strikes. Tom Hallian with the call. That starts. And right in that range where wouldn't have been surprising to see a call. Well, when uh, you've got a pitcher on the hill this late in the ball game with a no hit bid, uh, usually you'll see that call made. Eighth full count for Darvish today. Fouled out of play. That was a good swing by Matt Dominguez on the 3 2 breaking ball. One of the few we've seen. You know, Brownie, I'm not really sure what it is about the U Darvish breaking ball and or fastball for that matter that makes life so tough on the right hand hitters, but statistically, it's a nightmare. It certainly has been. That's strike three call and whoa. That one just shocked Dominguez. Strikeout number 14. You know, this one falls in the gift wrap category, I believe. That's well off the inside edge. I think even you, Darvish, had to be surprised to get that call. Now 14 strikeouts for Darvish, 103 pitches. Carlos Corcoran is 0 for 2. Second time Darvish has struck out 14 Astros this year in a game. High drive right field, way back Rios, and that one is the first hit, and it's a home run for Corcoran. Number seven. It's a two to one ball game. What a way to break up a no hitter after seven and a third inning. Corcoran takes him deep. And it's a one run lead. Carlos Corcoran looks like he's just come up with a game time or game winning home run. This is big, though, to shut down the no hit bid and takes a fastball out over the plate. Darvish knew it the instant it was hit. Big swing for Carlos Corcoran, and now it's a one run lead. Brandon Barnes batting. And looking at ball one. I think Carlos was also being timed for his best speed from home to home. Yes. As he went around the bats. Barnes takes that pitch, and it's two balls, no strikes. I think Carlos Corcoran has had one of those seasons as a backup catcher that is among the best you'll see. I mean, he's been really good. Seven home runs, 16 runs batted in for Carlos. It's not like the numbers are gaudy, but just the work he's done behind the plate and big hits he's had from both sides of the plate. That's his first homer since July 24th against Oakland. Drive to Barnes, two and one. Well, you talked about how difficult right-handed hitters have found it against Darvish. The switch hitting Corcoran, getting the fastball, batting left-handed, hit it out. After a lot of effective breaking balls against these right-handed batters today. Now back and it's two and two. Once again, great composure from you, Darvish. Twice seen. No hit ditch, won a perfect game, get away late here against the Astros this season, and he is just as calm as can be. And the home run gives the Astros catchers 19 combined homers. That's tops in the American League by a catching staff. Three behind the club record for catchers. Barnes is down on strikes. That's a 15th strikeout for Darvish. Uh, 
of that slider just becomes as close to untouchable as any pitch you'll you'll find around Major League Bas Baseball for right-hand hitters. Career high strikeouts. Oh, topping his 14 strikeout game here, April 2nd. He has number 15 here. Right-hander Tanner Shepard is warming up in the bullpen, and Jake Elmore, the batter, he's 0 for 2. Looking at ball one, and it might be the thinking long haul. Now that the no-hitter has been broken up with a one-run lead, Ron Washington will make a bullpen move after this inning. 110 pitches so far for Darvish. Usually it would be Joe Nathan in a save situation, 2-0. So perhaps Sheppers is warming up just as long as the eighth inning is still in play. And then Wash might get up Nathan. We'll see how it plays out. One thing's for sure, it went quickly from a no-hit bid to a one-run ball game. There was that possibility in the sixth inning as well. Sure was. Two and one. Jonathan VR drew that walk in the sixth inning after five and two-thirds perfect frames for Darvish. About to say VR after stealing second tried to steal third. Not so sure if he had stolen third that he was going to stop there. <laughs> That's up around the left shoulder of Elmore. And a 3 1 count for Darvish. You see the pitch count. Only nine in that seventh inning. He got a one pitch out when Wallace hit the fly ball to left field in that frame. That's called strike two. Full count to Elmore, the ninth full count for Darvish. Rangers have Moreland, Gentry, and Profar do up in the ninth. That's a fly ball out to left center field. Gentry going for it. And the center fielder moves over. Martine in front to make the grab. Corporan's home run makes it a one run lead. Two to one, Texas through eight. By Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. And by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. It's a one run lead now as those people are going places. Everybody here interested in this game. Two to one Rangers, top of the ninth inning. It was two to nothing with a no hit bit going seven and a third for you, Darvish. Now Chai Jen Low will be pitcher number three for Bo Porter today. Shown a very good arm since joining Houston. Left hand hitters hitting 143. Not sure I see the logic there yet. Not enough innings, just four. But he's got one of those arms you could actually see pitching in the back end of the bullpen. Yeah, he's been effective in the mid 90s as he's come in for those four games with the Astros starting 
July 31st at Baltimore the most recent outing uh, in the Boston series. And that was the seven to five Boston win coming on Wednesday. He went an inning and a third he came in with two men on not allowing either of them to score protecting the five four lead in the seventh inning. Then the Astros lost it after he left but as far as his work it was very very good. He now begins the ninth inning of work with lefty hitting first baseman Mitch Moreland in this two to one ball game. And Moreland took over defensively for Jeff Baker at first. Now this is his first at bat of the day. Taking ball one. Josh Fields working an inning and a third today allowed one hit no runs with no walks and one strikeout. 245 for Moreland 16 homers he's driven in 45. He's had 339 at bats. Moreland fouls it back. One and one you Darvish has had quite a day of it again here at Minute Maid Park. Looks like the end of the line for today for you Darvish leaving the bench after eight innings of one hit one run baseball walking one fanning 15 very talented young pitcher. Moreland hits that one out of play and it's one and two Darvish in line to be 12 and five by the end of the day and his 15 strikeouts have put him at 207 for the season to lead the majors. What a milestone for a pitcher 200 strikeouts in a year. Last year he struck out 221 in 191 innings. Foul back to keep the count of one and two Darvish threw 115 pitches 74 for strikes Joe Nathan warming up. He was 18 for 26 in first pitch strikes today. Moreland on a foul tip strikes out. Strike out number eight for Astros pitching today. Well, there's that fastball running away on the left hand hitter. Well, this guy's an intriguing acquisition for the ball club uh, because he could become one of those guys if he can stay healthy that could pitch successfully in the back end of the pen. Greg Gentry up the middle smacks a single into center field. Gentry is now one for four. Hit number nine for the Rangers. Jerks and Profar will follow. Back up the middle. It is often sought after, and once you can do it, boy, you can come up with a lot of base hits. Pitcher just has a hard time getting leather on it. Unless you're talking about shoes. <laughs> Profar singled in the seventh inning after walking in the second. The Rangers have been running off the one run wins lately. They are 19 and 10 in one run games. Throw back to first base in the dirt. Wallace picks it out. Gentry diving back in. The pitch ball one. Astros have lost six straight one run decisions. Low with a throw to first base. For the Astros in the bottom of the ninth, VR, Grossman, and Kraus are scheduled to bat. Good for a strike, and it's one and one. Final game of the season series here in this ballpark between the two, but six games remain in Arlington.
Foul back, and it's a one ball, two strike count. The Astros with rough sledding against the American League West. 15 wins, 34 losses. Have really had major problems against both the Rangers and Oakland. Two and ten against Texas, one and eleven against Oakland. Oakland the next destination and then it's Anaheim on the road trip. Flick foul off that rail in front of the dugout. Still a one and two count on Profar. This is the last time the Astros went through Anaheim they were on part of a uh, six game winning streak. And that really the highlight of the season to this point. So they'd love to find a way to get hot on this West Coast trip again. In tight snap throw to first. Safe at first. Pitch ball two. If Corcoran had been able to get it on the second base side of the bag, he might have had Gentry. It's always tough with the right-handed first baseman. That, that glove on the left hand generally has to sweep back to the bag, but yeah, that was close. Oklahoma City lost at Las Vegas four to three last night. Slicing outside the third baseline and foul. Still two and two. David Martinez gave up four runs at four and a third. He was the loser for Oklahoma City in the game last night. At Cashman Field. Corpus Christi lost at home to Arkansas. Seven four was the final there. Now Low and Corcoran are talking it over. Domingo Santana hit home run number 21 for the Hooks. Lancaster won a slugfest 9 8 at High Desert last night's game. Quad City shut out Wisconsin 5 0 on that one. Far takes and it's three and two. Santana at 247 now with 21 homers, 57 runs batted in, has an 813 OPS. In the last 10 games, he's gone deep four times. He came from the Phillies in the Hunter Pence deal. Big strapping Dominican born outfielder. There goes the runner on 3 2. Fly ball back in Grossman and left. Robbie has it. Gentry back to first on out number two. And Martine will be the batter. Rangers are a season high, 18 games over 500. And this one a one run lead with Martine trying to help them to a little bit more. Andrus is on deck. Joe Nathan has had terrific results this year. Ranger bullpen, one of the best around. Ball one to Martin. You Darvish would be 3 and 0 at Minute Maid Park with a win today as ERA in this ballpark is under 2. They're going again. Here's Corcoran's throw to Elmore and the tag and Gentry is out to end the top of the ninth inning with no runs a hit and now 2 to 1 Texas coming up for Houston in the ninth VR Grossman and Kraus.
Post game live presented by MD Anderson making cancer history. Joe Nathan in the game uh, for the Texas Rangers with his two to one lead. Darvish with an unbelievable day. Eight innings, one hit, one run, one walk, 15 strikeouts. One of those rare games. And now he turns it over to Nathan, who's 34 of 36 in saves with a three and one record of 1.54 ERA. Usually when you're facing the closer, you're, you're thinking, well, this is going to get really tough. But when you're facing a closer coming on on the heels of you, Darvish, maybe it's a break. It might be a break. As good as Nathan has been. And it's VR to lead it off. Jonathan with a strikeout and a walk in this game today. Carlos Corporan broke up the no hit bit with a one out eighth inning homer off Darvish. Sitting by bench coach Eduardo Perez as VR leads it off against Nathan. Nathan has four of his saves against the Astros in his five outings against Houston this year. He's given up one run in those five innings. Save the five to four win on Saturday night. Showing butt, VR backs out of there and it's ball one. Nathan has allowed a batting average of 158, fourth lowest among American League relief pitchers. He delivers and it's one and one. Joe, 38 years old, born in Houston. Tommy John surgery in 2010, missing all of that year. Little chop, Beltre to his left, turns and throws to get it. That is good third base play. Just aggressively getting to this ball. You can let the shortstop take it, and maybe he can make the play with VR going down the line, hard to say. But there is just no doubt in what. Beltre is going to do once he sees the ball. The Rangers have had 22 one hitters in their history. Bobby Grossman's 0 for 3 with three punch outs. That's in at 81 miles per hour for strike one. Start a curveball on Robbie Grossman. Words out from this left side of the plate. He's been slamming some home runs. Nathan. Two outs. And Mark Krause will be the batter. This would be the Rangers first eight game road winning streak since 2010 if they get this one today. Their road record would go to 36 and 26 if they win. Krause has struck out and hit two fly balls to left. Wallace on deck. Eight career, 30 save seasons for Joe Nathan. All one there to Kraus. Even to that one on one, the Rangers had a four pitcher one hitter in August of 2010 against Minnesota. All the way, that makes it one and two for Joe Nathan. Oakland has one earlier today. A Texas win keeps the Rangers in a one game lead atop the AL West. Ranger fans standing and applauding behind their dugout. That's strike three. And the Rangers win it two to one. A combined one hitter by you Darvish who goes to 12 and five and Joe Nathan. The Texas takes an eight game winning streak back home. Adrian Beltre with a three hit day. Nathan picking up save number 35. Ron Washington's club winning it. Rangers two, Astros one today.